What's up, guys? I'm Mike D'Antonio, founder and CEO of Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have an awesome episode for you guys today. We're going to be talking about how the banking sector straight up exploded today. We're also going to be talking about some possible potential problems between the U.S. and China that can further lead to a potential downfall in the stock market. Then we're going to be going over a list of momentum plays for tomorrow. And then we're going to be going over a $1.75 million swing trade for the rest of this week. And then at the end of the video, we're going to be answering all of your guys' questions. So with that being said, Tom, if you want to tell us a little bit what's been going on with the banking sector today. Yeah, banking stocks exploded today and Goldman Sachs led the way, closing up over 9%. As we can see on the chart here, every single one of these stocks exploded. And there's no solid reason for the rise, but The Motley Fool reported that banks are heavily dependent on consumers' willingness and ability to get out and spend money and the ability to pay their bills. A smoother and faster reopening than originally anticipated could mean that the uptick in banks' loan losses could be relatively mild and higher than expected consumer confidence could mean that the average U.S. consumer is in better financial shape um, than many experts have thought. And the economic recovery could happen much quicker than expected. And also, J J.P. Morgan's CEO came out today and said that um, their banking stock is very valuable at the current price it's at right now. Yeah, exactly. So like Tom said, there's no major reason why, there's no one major reason why the banking sector exploded today. But uh, people are just kind of like speculating that uh, since we are on track to have a smoother reopening than anticipated, that's why the banking stocks are up. So Tom, if you can just go to like one chart right now and maybe go on like a daily chart of let's say like Citigroup, for example. Yep. So Tom's pulling up a, uh, about here. Can, yeah, like just like that's good. That time frame's good. I just want to compare the banking stocks right now to the overall market. So uh, you guys can see right now Citigroup, uh, and really just the rest of the banking stocks in general, they didn't really have too much of a V-shaped recovery like the rest of the market did. So like if you go to like the SPY, for example, Tom, you know, you see this huge drop because Corona, but you also see a really big uh, kind of like recovery. Like you see a really big recovery. And like, let's say you look at a stock like Facebook. Um, they are hitting all-time highs. Like they hit all-time highs again today. So we're seeing all these sectors and industries really have a strong recovery, but we weren't seeing that with the financial sectors. Like if we look at like, let's say Citigroup again, you know, we, we aren't seeing that same type of recovery. So I feel like today was kind of a mix of, you know, the economy looks like it's going to be uh, opening sooner and smoother than originally anticipated. And then it's also a mix of, you know, the banking stocks were kind of lagging on this entire recovery. So that's kind of my take on it. And more importantly, we're, we're looking at like the future now in terms of banking stocks. We're going to talk more about banking stocks towards the end of this video, what we think about it for the future. But uh, right now, I mean, it seems pretty bullish. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think they seem very bullish right now, especially Goldman Sachs. I think they just broke above their channel. Yes, they did. So you can see I had a nice channel drawn here and they ended up popping right above it. So they're, they're breaking their past few months highs right now. And they're almost at $200 a share again. So um, expect to see a nice resistance there. But if they ended up breaking that, we could even go way higher than that. And that's what I'm expecting to see, especially with the confidence of having these loans repaid faster than they had originally thought. Yeah, exactly. And then Tom, if you want to talk a little bit about the China issue. Yeah, right now the United States is considering a range of sanctions to punish China for its crackdown on Hong Kong. President Trump was asked about the sanctions today at the White House, and he said that his administration is doing something right now and that he will unveil it later this week. And he also said that it's something you're going to be hearing over the next week or before the end of the week. And he said it will be very powerful, he thinks. And if he thinks it's going to be very powerful, that means that these could be some pretty strong sanctions. Right. And that could definitely lead to another downturn in the markets. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's never good when, you know, we're arguing against another country, especially to the magnitude of China, like just like an economic sense, you know. So uh, last time the U.S. and China like had like a huge trade war, the market suffered a lot. So, you know, you could see like Tom's drawing towards the end of what was at the end of 2018. Yeah, like December 2018. Uh, the markets really suffered during that time. And 
you know, uh, you know, it's just not good when, you know, like, let's say we put some sanctions on China and then they retaliate and then put some sanctions on us. And then it's just like back and forth, back and forth. That can be horrible for the markets overall. Hopefully it doesn't turn into that. You know, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does, uh, definitely look to the markets in a bearish sense. So keep that in mind. And some stocks to watch out would just be China stocks right now. But uh, we have to wait until we get like an official report if Trump does do anything. And it just depends like what the sanctions are even on. So there's just a lot of variables right now with that. And if anything does go through with that, we will definitely be covering that in one of our future episodes. So, you know, now we're gonna talk about our momentum plays for tomorrow. Uh, the momentum plays work very well, pretty much. We're just waiting for them to break their previous high from today. So we have four stocks that we're gonna be looking at for tomorrow. And the first one is RCL. So we're gonna tell you a price right now. And if it breaks that price tomorrow, we will be looking at this in a bullish sense. So RCL is the first stock we're looking at. Tom, what was the high today? $50.36. Okay, so Tom, can you give us like an estimate about where you would think we should watch for a breakout? Yeah, I would watch for a breakout above $51 just because I like to watch breakouts above a solid dollar mark. Yeah, so if RCL breaks above $51 tomorrow, um, even in pre-market or whatever, I'll look to get in this in a bullish sense. We're just looking at this for a breakout because we're saying, hey, RCL has a lot of upside potential. What was RCL up today, Tom? They were up a total of 14%. 14%. So if we if it could break a tie today, we think it has a lot of room to go even further. The next stock is Goldman Sachs. And you know, just for simplicity's sake, uh, simplicity's sake, uh, you can just look at any bank stocks. So you can look at Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan, any other banking stocks. But just for this video, we're looking at Goldman Sachs. So the high today was what, Tom? 197.10. Okay, so what should we watch for for a break? I would watch for a break above 198 and then head towards $200. Okay, so a break above 198, watch for, uh, you know, look for it in a bullish sense. And then we have MRNA, and this is for the downside, guys. So what was the low today, Tom? It was about $57 on the dot. Okay, cool. So what should, we, what should we be watching for a break? I'd watch for, I, I would watch for 57. It looks pretty solid. Okay, cool. So guys, if MRNA falls below $57 tomorrow, look at that in a bearish sense. And then last but not least, we have HON. All right. And the, what was the high today, Tom? 146.26. So I would expect a good break above 147. Okay, cool. So if it breaks above 147, look at that in a bullish sense. So these momentum plays are super simple to trade. Uh, They're meant to be day trades. They work very well. I know a lot of you guys in the comments make a lot of money from them. So keep your eye on that if you guys want to watch that for tomorrow. And now we have the $1.75 million option that expires this week. And this option is rather unique. Like normally when we talk about unusual options activity, like someone putting $10 million in a trade, normally uh, the people putting that money in the trade is shorting that option. But today we think they might be longing this option. So we're looking at the Netflix 400 strike puts that expire this week, which is May 29th expiration. Someone put about $1.75 million into this trade. Now, Given that Netflix is down so much uh, recently, uh, you know, they have a lot of momentum to the downside. Their options are cheap right now, and Netflix is a big mover. So it really looks like they can be longing these 400 strike puts, but just to protect ourselves. So what, how this trade's going to work is pretty much if Netflix is down tomorrow or just has downwards momentum, the Netflix 400 strike puts are going to be an amazing trade in our opinion. However, if Netflix is looking choppy or even going to the upside, then we're going to know that whoever traded these options um, shorted them, meaning that they want the options to expire worthless. So if you then at that point, you could just sell like a put credit spread, like the 400 put, and then buy like the 390 put but that can get a little bit more complicated. So to keep it simple, if Netflix is, has downwards momentum tomorrow, look at the 400 puts. If it doesn't have downwards momentum, then don't trade this. <laughs> so 
we're going to keep it simple like that. And then we talked about how we're going to go over the banking stocks just a little bit more in depth right now, Tom. So if you could just pull up like a chart of whatever banking stock, um, you know, guys, like we said, <clears throat> there, the banking industry has been lagging the entire market because of the coronavirus. Like we said, we have certain stocks at record highs right now, like Facebook and Amazon. You have the SPY having a huge recovery. Broke, what was, it broke 300 today, right, Tom? Yeah, it ended up breaking 300 and even going up to about $300, which means the S&P 500 was above 3,000, which is a big mark for it. Yeah, yeah so that's awesome. Uh, you know, we're seeing a huge recovery with the market overall, but the banking industry has been lagging. So like we said, there's no real, no real reason why the banking industry was up so much today, but there's a lot of momentum and you never want to fight against the momentum. So Tom, if you could pull up a chart of TWLO, you could see how they had a huge run up on earnings and then they continued for like four or five days after that. Uh, just like the initial run up, Tom, the initial gap up. Yep, right there. So you could see how they had that huge just continuation. I think it'd be awesome if we could get that continuation with the banking industry. I feel pretty bullish about them, but anything can change at any moment. But they do have a ton of momentum, a lot of great volume. And this might even be a short squeeze. You know what I mean? So like if there were a lot of institutions short, these banking stocks, and now they start to see the banking industry go up, they're all going to buy back in, which in turn brings the stock price back up. So that could be another reason for a potential huge update today. And then we have, we're going to answer you guys' questions right now. So with the first question, we have Taylor saying, when you say if it breaks um, the price X for the momentum plays, uh, look to get in. Do you typically have a time frame for that? Like if it breaks it within the first five to 15 minutes of market open, or is it any time during the day? So pretty much with the momentum plays, it is any time during the day. However, if it breaks it, closer to market open, you're going to see a lot better move. So you can watch these all day long for a break. However, the breaks in the morning are going to be the quickest and easiest plays. Then we have Whitney saying slammed the like button. Great job, guys. Thank you so much for that comment, Whitney. And guys, if you didn't like, don't forget to like this video. It really helps grow the channel. Um, now we have Ronnie saying loving the vid, guys. I have a question. How does a stock gap up or down? What causes that? Also, does that spot eventually have to be filled? Thanks, love you guys. So awesome comment, Ronnie. Uh, pretty much a stock gaps up or down in pretty much, it's very simple. Like it's just after hours trading. It's just the same as any other trading. Uh, pretty much it's just at non-standard market time. So like for example, you can cause a stock to gap up right now if you wanted to. So like you can go to an OTC stock right now buy the stock at the ask price and you can personally make the stock gap up 20% just off your little account if you wanted to. You know, anyone can really do that. Um, but with larger stocks, you know, there's, like I said, it's just, it's just normal trading just at non-standard times. Typically, uh, a catalyst causes this. Like for example, uh, like let's say with mRNA, right? mRNA had news come out the other day of the vaccine, like they had a lot of progress with the vaccine. And you could see on Tom's chart right now, uh, you saw a huge move in pre-market, you know, and really it's the same thing as normal trading. It's just at non-standard times. And no, that, is, that spot uh, does not have to be filled. You know, there's no guarantees or certainties with anything in trading. And I would say like, you know, the spots filled maybe half the time, you know, like I don't really see a huge edge with that. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. Awesome comment. And then we have Rohit saying, do you just buy options or the stock? If you buy the option, how far out do you go? Also, what would a good call price be for any breakout stock? So I personally mainly just, um, just trade options now. Um, Tom does, you know, Tom, if you want to talk a little bit about your trading. Yeah, I do options and I also do long-term stocks. So I, I get into some good dividend stocks and good growth stocks. So like right now, for example, I was in um, Leggett and Platt, which went ahead and gapped up today. And then I'm also in AT&T, which is a good option for long-term um, considering all the 5G applications coming out. And then I'm also into 3M, which is another good long-term stock because of just everything that they do. They do 
so many different products and have a ton of factories. And it's just a thing where um, I like to keep about 75% of my account in long-term stocks and about 25% in shorter term stocks. But just keep in mind, a lot of it also depends on account size because if your account only has $1,000 in it or $2,000, um, if you're holding a stock like 3M for the long term, that's not going to be the most effective way to trade for you. Right, exactly. So yeah, awesome insight there. And then he also asked, if you buy the option, how far out do you guys go? So that depends so much. It depends if you're day trading, swing trading, depends how long you're holding, depends what type of trade it is. It, there's so, 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 so many variables. So if you could give us like an example or anything like that, we can definitely give you a more detailed answer, but awesome comment. Then we have Manny saying, thanks, Mike and Tom. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the day trades for tomorrow. So Manny, I really, really hope you traded the day trade today. So um, the day trade today was alert. It was the JP Morgan 93 calls. I alerted it at a dollar and 70 cents. So $170. Okay. Today it ran up to $435. So Manny, I really hope you made a trade. Should have had a, had a nice profit. And then guys, if you guys want to get these day trades completely free, completely free, uh, click the first link in the description down below that says the discord. And then we have Geo saying notification squad. Yep, guys. So if you guys want to join, if you guys want to be one of the first people to see our daily stock market watch list, click that bell next to the subscribe button and you're going to get a notification every time we post a new video. Uh, then we have Hunter saying awesome vid, excited for that video on the biggest mistakes. Mine was not knowing about implied volatility and time decay. So yeah, implied volatility and time decay are huge, huge, huge in options trading pretty much on implied volatility tells you how expensive options are so you can see right now on tom's chart you can see implied volatility at its peak right there that's when options were most expensive and at the same time that's when the market was down the most so normally when the markets are down or any stock is down that's when implied volatility is the highest meaning that's when options are most expensive however when everything's all good and calm and the markets are up Normally, options prices fall. So then yeah, the implied volatility was up so much right here that um, in some cases, you could have bought calls that, that should have made money, but they didn't even make money because the implied volatility was just that high. Exactly. So the higher implied volatility is, the more volatile the market is, and the more harder it is to profit on your option. And then we have Vu saying, I think it's also a good input that you tell your audiences which play you'll be playing. Exactly. And then we have Joe saying, can't kill the bull. I am beginning to believe that nothing can stop this market. We'll be looking to transition from shorting into buying calls if it does not stop. Watching Baba and Netflix to head lower. Yep, I mean, you called it spot on, especially with Netflix. What was Netflix down today, Tom? About 4%. Yeah, so awesome, awesome call with Netflix. Bobo was up slightly, up about 1%, but had a huge fall in the middle of the day. So two awesome calls, Joe. And then we have Whitney again saying, uh, what ticker do you watch for futures in the morning? So uh, we watch YM, which is slash YM on Thinkorswim. These are Dow futures. And we also watch slash ES, which is S&P 500 futures. And then we have SJ saying it's a proven, it's not helping COVID-19. So that was with the uh, hydroxychloroquine. And then, you know, like, like we said, there's a lot of mixed research and everything with hydroxychloroquine. And then we have Vu again saying, I went in Intel in Tilray last week and sold it today and made a small profit. Thank you very much. Love to hear that. Awesome comment. And then he also said, thank you. I have made several small amounts of money since I started watching your video. Love to hear that. Uh, Tom and I would really appreciate if you share these episodes. It really helps grow the channel. And then uh, Vu said again, thank you. You guys are really on point. Thank you. And then we have Jeff saying, as always, thanks for the great content. Thank you for the comment. And then we have Peter saying congrats on 3K subs. So that's a congratulations to you guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel so much and smashing that like button and all these comments. The comments are really helping to grow the channel. Uh, so I just want to say thank you guys. And then we have Gretel saying loved it. And then Ro and then Vu watching Roku. 
and then Janina, thanks for the videos. And then Omar, thanks for the video. Thank both of you guys. And then last but not least, we have Maxing. I won't be taking that drug, which is hydroxychloroquine. It is better to drink tonic water. Uh, it, it contains the main ingredient of that drug called quinine. Uh, it is what makes the tonic water bitter. And then, yeah, so yeah, futures are up 450 right now. That means we will see a pop. Short weeks normally brings the bulls out. We'll have to play what's in front of us. So yeah, awesome call on the futures. Uh, up about 450 at the time of the comment, and they ran up pretty big. You know, we had a we had a pretty good day in the market overall. There's gonna be a lot of opportunities from the move today, especially in the banking industry. You know, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, um, Wells Fargo. There's so many different stocks to look at, and we are definitely looking for a continuation play with the financial sector. There's a ton of momentum. And we're, we're very excited. So, Tom, with that being said, do you have any last-minute stocks, comments, anything for today? Nope, that covers it, Mike. Awesome, awesome. So, guys, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting the channel so much by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Tom and I really, really appreciate it. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe, and you will see our daily stock market watch list slash prediction videos. We really appreciate all of your guys' comments. It's helping to grow the channel uh, so much, and we would really appreciate it if you could share the channel with your friends. So with that being said, thanks for watching.